your insurance is going to be ridiculous. If you have any, even a clean driving record, if you're less than 23, it's going to be $30,000 a year, Holy if not smokes. more, in just commercial insurance. Wow. Wow. So if I was a young guy starting out, I would find a larger company to lease onto and run underneath their DOT number. You can still own the truck. So you'd still have some good income, but you'd be running underneath their authority and their insurance. What you should do is, is get a DOT number like right now. If you know at some point in time in your life you want to own a trucking company, get an LLC, get a DOT number, and you don't ha- it, it can you can file it to be inactive. So let's say it's inactive for five years and then you activate it. You have a five year old entity. You're not a new uh, company because oh. that's where they get you is. I'm going to go out, I'm going to get an LLC, then go straight to the DMV, get a DOT number. That's where the insurance gets you. Thank you for listening to the Farm for Fun podcast, a happy hour spinoff of the Farm for Profit podcast. These episodes are hosted by Tanner Winteroff, the Iowa Bankerman, David Whitaker, the Iowa Land Guy, and a random farmer named Corey. Each episode, they plan to focus on a brewery or distillery while talking about all current events and everything else. Crack a beer, mix a drink, and join on the fun. Remember, if you aren't farming for fun, we know you probably drive an automatic semi. All right. Welcome back to another Farm for Fun episode. This is Tanner Winterhoff. This is Corey Hillebo. And this is David Whitaker. Remember, we have two different show formats. So if you're joining us for the first time, this is our uh, very loosely put together episode. We enjoy a beverage, talk to a lot of our friends in agriculture, and our profit shows, uh, which would come out next Monday or the next episode in the queue. Uh, has a little bit more of a structure. What's working in an ag segment, a a little tutorial or something that might help your farm be a little bit more profitable. So uh, welcome. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. Hey guys, I want to just talk about one of our reviews we had. Uh, I don't know if you follow him, Iowa Farmer Blake at Iowa Farmer Blake on TikTok. Uh, young man on in Iowa actually does a lot of drone videos. It's pretty cool. Uh, TikTok, he said, great podcast. Listen to uh, the Tony and uh, uh, Aaron Holbert uh, episodes that we had. Those are two good ones. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's good ones for him to uh, for him to put out there. That's a, a nice little segue. I don't know if you did that on purpose, Dave, but. Flying Ag is one of our partners through this holiday season. A great Christmas gift idea. Uh, Corey, you've worked with Flying Ag, haven't you? Yeah, actually, I think it was back like 2015 or 16. I actually wanted to get a drone. I reached out to Chad Colby. He pointed me in the direction of Flying Ag. Um, They kind of package everything that you need um, to use a drone in agriculture. And they, I talked to Corey, I think it was over there at Flying Ag, and he got me set up with a Phantom 4 Pro. It's about time for me to upgrade, so I'm probably going to yeah. do that myself. You need the Mavic Mini or something new. Yeah. They got a mauler. Yep. This would be a good spot to do it. And if you did it now, before February 1st, use Farm for Profit as a code when you check out and you get an extra battery. So yeah. that's only up until February 1st. Go to flyingag.com and use that code. But another cool review, uh, another TikTok listener, kind of a fun little avenue that we're going here for our growing audience. Podcast is great. Very interesting from at Dearboy81. So thank you. Continue to leave your reviews behind. That really helps us put things together. What do you guys think? As we kick this off, we always try to put a little drinking game together. What, you know, based upon the guests that we've got today, what do you think would be a good word that we should use? So we've got a guest in here that uh, is on one particular social media site. And so the, oh, yeah. I think the word should be snap. 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 Oh. I bet you we say snap. Snap, crackle, pop. A couple of times. <laughs> oh, snap. Snap. There it is. Drinking word of the week. If you're going to play along right alongside us, snap is that drinking word. Okay. I don't know if I got anything else, Dave. Well, I, I tell you, you, you I, get to I, do it up a little bit. You this normally week. give the intro, and, yep. and Tanner tried his hand once and he got fired. I didn't, yeah. <laughs> and so I, I'll try my hand at it here and see, see what we can do. So this week, this guest comes to us. This guest loves to wear coveralls and thinks that he is sexy every time he wears them. He looks good in a tuxedo every time he's fast talking. He has a gorgeous wife and a young daughter, and she is really good at cooking. He's a farmer by trade, farmer during the day, and he drives over a million miles at night. This guest today goes by the stock rocker and on snapchat you can find him as rolling stock all one word this is my good friend cam Hartstack from clarinda iowa welcome 
Rocking, rock, rocking stock. stock. Oh, oh my god, that's pretty good. Though. Oh man, that's all right, mercy. Oh. <laughs> so I'm fired already. You might already be fired. Also, stock rocker, rocking stock, not rolling. Stock. You get it. You'll figure it out. That's what happens when you write it down. Welcome, Cam. Welcome, Cam. How are you guys? We're fantastic. How are you? I can't complain. Can we just set the stage here? Cam rolled in in a semi. He literally, literally <laughs> rolled in. <laughs> I mean, and not the one he uses to, to haul cattle with, usually, or yeah, the one we back, see him with. He backed right into the parking lot. I brought this one so I was a little more incognito. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got to watch the, the fan babes. he got to beat them off. <laughs> it's something like that. But now i uh happy to be here. At, uh, if I was going to drive up here, I just want to bring a semi, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you got a trailer on the back. You're going to go get something after after this or tomorrow, and you're helping Dave with a, uh, some auctions tomorrow. So it uh, just makes sense, right? And you said it's a little bit more reliable than, than the pickup. <laughs> <laughs> it gets me from point A to point B. <laughs> well, Cam, why don't you do a little bit more of an introduction for yourself? Why don't you tell our listeners uh, who you are, where you're from, and what your tie to agriculture is? Uh, I'm Cam Hartstack from Clarinda, Iowa. Uh, we farm south and east of Clarinda. Uh, we got a little row crop and some cow calf pair operation, and alongside that, we do trucking all over the Midwest and uh, hauling livestock, uh, cattle and hogs mainly, and do a little bit of auctioneering as well. Uh, I'm a realtor for Farmers National Company under David, and uh, that seems to be taking off quite well here. And just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Nice, nice. Welcome. We, a uh, friend of the show, obviously, you've helped uh, helped us grow our audience in the past. We're happy to finally have you on as a guest and learn a little bit more about yourself, and uh, welcome to Huxley. Yeah, I will say, uh, you know, the views that what I get every day, the few times that I did promote your guys' podcast, it did have several screenshots, and you can see how many people followed it, so hopefully it works out. Okay, so that's what we try to do. We try to grab somebody related to agriculture, and they usually have some type of a social media tie. And this is the first time we've ever gone to somebody with a Snapchat presence. Yep. How did you get that started? Uh, I like to say just dumb luck, but uh, actually David and I attended the same class. We were out in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. And uh, the teacher of that class said, if you want to become something, be the expert in that field. And I remember at the time, this was, uh, I forget what year it was, but we had some drops in... uh, you know, markets and stuff. And I was having to pursue trucking a little bit more to uh, make the land payment. So I wanted to truck more. So I just uh, started pursuing uh, the Snapchat and I had quite a following on my personal page and uh, just kind of grew that. And if if anything, I mean, it's definitely helped popularity. I mean, a lot more people know my truck, know our operation, but it did create some credibility. Yeah. Uh, among people we haul for. And it, it definitely did grow business, and it's been pretty fun. And so you started the stock rocker livestock. You haul livestock. Yeah, right? we haul livestock. I We did a little bit of everything before. I mean, we've been in the trucking business since 1948. My grandpa started, my dad's carried it on, and now I'm slowly taking over the reins. And uh, I just I wanted to haul more livestock. I, that's, that's what I wanted to do, and uh, that's what we always said was, you know, when we you know headed to go rock stock, you know, so... It just named the page uh, the stock rocker. So, so you made this page on Snapchat, and it, it's a little bit different than like a regular Snapchat, right? It, it's something that people follow. Yeah, I so I had my personal page, and I was already getting a lot of views on there, just because people think the stuff I run into on a daily basis is entertaining. Yep. So I created this page, just kind of I I first of all I didn't really want people to know who I was at first. You know, but then they started spotting my truck and sending me pictures. <laughs> so, and, like, because you post random crazy yeah, I, stuff? Is yeah, that I why? just, yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I don't, I didn't want to be, uh, social media people annoy me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> says the social you media You know, like, like, the, like, <laughs> says the most famous social media guy in the room. Yeah, yeah I, it just, uh, it, it annoys me when people are trying to shove products down you and, uh, influencers, I, I guess yeah, they're yeah, called. Yeah, yeah. They, they annoy me. Yeah, except for when you're talking about flying egg and buying drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of part of it. They just kind of annoy me. You always see them on there. And so you didn't want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. So so the but way... There, I, go ahead. I was going to say, but there, there became a point where it's just like, 
uh, you know, no one else is going to toot your own horn, so you just as well do it, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. So your, like I said, uh, a personal page is one thing. How are you able to get all these images that you share? Do people just send them to you? People send them to me, and then I kind of got to sort through them and uh, screenshot them and repost them, and it's time-consuming. It's a good thing I have time sitting in a tractor in a truck because I can sit down and do her. So. <laughs> Is that why egg and uh, and TikTok are so popular right now? Media, probably. Probably. social media? I know a lot of people are like, oh, man, there's a grain line. And I'm like, sweet, I get to update the stock rocker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you saying, send me to ADM. I, I want to go and You know, I've had that, I had that issue this week. I've been hauling the Lincoln way, and there's no line. I'm like, man, I'd just like five minutes to like catch up on things. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> All right, you guys heard me open a beer. Corey, what is, uh, thank you to Dole Distributing for sending us some beer again. That's one of our favorite parts about doing the Farm for Fun shows is we drink while we have these conversations with our friends. And uh, what did they drop off for us this week? We got some Goose Island. Uh, that's a pretty popular beer. I know I've seen it a lot. Um, this one is their Hazy IPA, uh, Dave favorite. <laughs> uh, juicy, hazy, and mango-y it I do says. like the tab on the top It's got like a star built into it Yeah, that's kind of cool like Black tab Black tab With a little star This release is dedicated to Johnny A longtime Goose Island employee Johnny and Brewer Quinn came up with this recipe After Johnny's recent victorious battle with cancer Alright, let's give it a try Here we go, Johnny Oh Oh I got that fruit, that little mango on the end Wow it's not as hoppy as a lot of IPAs. No, it's not. No, I'll even say that. That is a ton a, a ton of fruity, Cam. What do you think? That's dangerously smooth. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I've got a sleeper out in the parking lot. <laughs> it's a good thing I've got a sleeper. Wow. And the, That's the color, a good beer. The color on this, Cam. What color? What is that? It's a, not even, it's not salmon. Is it peach? I was going to say salmon. Or is it mango? It's like orange mango slash. It's different in different lights. Wow. I'm going to have to open another one of these. Yeah. No, I. It is. It's it's an IPA front, front, and then as you as you swallow and take that flavor in, there's there's more of the fruit, the mango that comes at the yeah, end of it, and it's not at the beginning. It it, it, it is, is a very good beer. I don't know if I've said that for a while. That's a great choice, Dole Distributing. That was a very good taste. Thank you very much. Okay, so just a couple people. Watch your Snapchats. Oh, you better drink again. You guys keep oh. forgetting every time you say Snapchat. Oh, yourself. I haven't been, I haven't oh. been forgetting. So. Is it kind of like uh, asking a farmer how many acres they farm or uh, asking a guy how big his shoes are? If we ask you how many people look at your snaps? Uh, you know, it, it, it fluctuates. My Mondays and Tuesdays are pretty big and it kind of slows off during the week. But it's easily like seven or 8,000 is kind of a slow day. I'll have days like during harvest, I could tell I was hitting twelve and 13,000 views a day. That's wow. going to be what, like six million a year? Probably closer to seven. Wow. So, so, I, so har- I, harvest and planting season are pretty big for me because there's a lot of people, I think, on their phones. So, <laughs> agriculture. So, what, yeah. what, what, for the people that are listening, if you've never followed uh, at Rocking, Rocking Stock, Stock. Stock. <laughs> Got that right this time. I'm going to go so, sign up for the Rolling Stock. Yeah, don't, one. don't, yeah. not Rolling Stones here. <laughs> <laughs> Rocking Stock. If if they go to your page, what are they going to find? Like, is it what is it? Uh, I just repost what people send me and you'd be surprised what our followers see every day. Uh, I would say it's majority agricultural farmer, trucker, people kind of in that realm. I've got followers. I think the furthest would be like Australia. Oh. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot in North Dakota, Sioux city, Sioux falls area that follow me in Minnesota. Because right now everyone's Snapchatting ice fishing, it looks like. Oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, then obviously <laughs> Iowa, Missouri. I mean, it's just kind of all the Midwest here. Uh, you know, because you can go in the analytics and kind of see where your followers are. And that's kind of the the main part. But, I mean, it does go out, you know, Colorado, So do we need, Idaho, like, crazy trucker Ohio. lingo to be in the, the Stock Rocker Club? No, you just have to have Snapchat. Have you and ever I, been... I maxed out on friends, so I can't add oh. you back. So Oh, man. You can max out? I don't even know what it was. I think it was like five thousand. Oh, wow. Really? That's I didn't even think that was a thing. Yeah. Have really? you ever been banned? I haven't. Okay. Wow. It, you know the uh, I I was just going through my phone the other day, and I had a deal that said, uh, "Just hit three hundred followers. Thanks for following my page." And I had to laugh because that was in like twenty sixteen. It's like three hundred followers. I can have that in twenty minutes now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> 
And you're maxed out on friends. So if you don't follow somebody back, that's why. Yeah. yeah. I got gotcha. you. It's not because I'm annoying. I'm avoiding you or anything. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like to me that's a cop out. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's a lot of pictures a day coming your way. Well, yes. Yeah, so, okay. So how many pictures do you get that you don't share? Probably half. Wow. Some people send me dumb stuff. I, <laughs> I kind of just let it go yeah, to the wayside. I made a TikTok today promoting it, and he screenshotted it, but it, I don't think it ever made it on the I don't story, think it so ever made it on the story. The day, I was waiting for TikTok, Monday or Tuesday. So. That no, was my big uh, day. No, that was the big day. So <laughs> good answer. Good answer. <laughs> that, that's pretty funny. No, that That's really good. Okay, so now here's a, a very sexist question. So we've had uh, social media influencers, those that are, are famous on, on social media that are female, and they talk about the weird and creepy things that they get. Do you get weird and creepy things? Do people send you inappropriate stuff as well? I, I did. Feet pics? No, not, <laughs> no it, not really anymore. Anymore? I, okay. yeah. <laughs> In the beginning. Uh, I don't know. I mean, occasionally you get this like random like click here, you know, $20 lifetime membership. Where I was like, nope. <laughs> nope. Yeah, I don't try. I, I barely trust Amazon. So. Stock Rocker's got a for for you page. No, not quite. <laughs> no. is that what they are? <laughs> not, not a for you only, only fans. Oh, only <laughs> only, oh Sorry, there, 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 yeah. Yeah. sitting there going. That's I'm a, that's I'm what a, comes up. I'm gonna have to be the one to correct him. Yeah, oh, only see. fans. I thought it was a for yeah, you. Yeah, because I've had people who are like promote this to your followers. I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I heard it's good money. I wouldn't know. The only thing I've done to make money off Snapchat would be Mudflap app. I don't know if you guys buy diesel I, fuel. I've seen Have that. Have you seen that? Yep. Yeah, so if uh, if you click my link and then follow it, and then we each get $10 uh, for our first diesel fuel purchase, and then I I get like a penny a gallon for everything you buy after that. Wow. Okay. Sounds appropriate for a guy that drives a truck. Yeah, it's it's nice. They they contacted me at first. And they're like, um, so we have this the 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 people that created the app called me and they're like, so we have this format that if you refer a friend, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we pay you. You're referring way more friends than our system can handle, <laughs> and uh, we weren't anticipating one person having this many. So we set up a kind of a partnership. So you're the guy at the top of the trucking gas fuel pyramids. Yeah. Fuel pyramids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't I don't need to promote them because I know they're not sponsoring us, but it, it it does work great. You get a fuel discount, you use your credit debit card. I mean, I'm not getting paid to say that, obviously. But yeah. yeah. So just, uh, so Snapchat, that's the only thing you've made money on? They don't have like a uh, ad fund or anything like that, like YouTube or, or anything like that? I had Howe's Diesel Treatment. Um I they probably finally just sent me stuff because they got annoyed by me contacting them. <laughs> yeah. So they sent me some swag and I just mailed it out to some followers and stuff, but I never saw any money from it. But yeah. you know, but I'm then, good at working for free. And then you have I'm your, good at working for free. You have yeah. your own yeah, most farmers are. You have your own swag, correct? Yeah. I mean I have sold several pieces of equipment on the stock rocker page. Okay. Um, not too long ago, a guy did actually send me some money. I got a semi sold for him. And nice. Can people I, go to that? Do you have like uh, hats or koozies or uh, huggies? I haven't. Huggies. We, <laughs> we, we made all this stuff, and we had anticipation of going to truck shows this summer. Okay. Oh yeah, but uh, most of them were canceled. As, I guess you can catch COVID by looking at each other's. Oh, trucks. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Cam, Cam's even got a air freshener. The that stock rocker air freshener. I have yeah. one in my truck. It's there you pretty, go. It's pretty dandy. So that's that's a good question, though. Uh, have you noticed in your line of work, both farming, trucking, and Snapchat, how has COVID nineteen affect fa affected you in twenty twenty? Our business. We had a few weeks there where we were above average slow. I would say maybe July, kind of right in there. We were kind of slow. The slaughter is most of our trucking is the slaughter plants. You want to re-say that? Most of our trucking is to lockers. I don't, <laughs> no, I don't no, mean, it's, no. Yeah, we haul fat hogs and fat cattle, and there was some weeks in there where a plant would have COVID and we couldn't haul there. I know we had some Tama loads get canceled, some Greater Omaha loads get canceled, and some loads down to Triumph and St. Joe get canceled. But for the most part, I don't think all of them all got canceled at the same time. So, I mean, so, you got to eat. So Yeah, truckers are pretty 
by themselves anyway, so probably COVID still... I, actually, they'd be one of our heroes that truck our stuff all over the world while everybody's sitting at home. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're probably very busy right now. My, I know my brother does a little bit of uh, uh, brokering some loads, and it's just truckers are kind of few and far in between right now because there's so many loads that need to go. That's a lot of loads. What do, you, do you ever uh, haul any hogs up this way, or do you haul for a certain company on the hog side? Um... No, I just uh, take what I can get. I yeah. guess I just I just wondered because I have hogs up here, so it'd be cool if you just pulled in sometime. I was gonna say it. Yeah, I guarantee you that you'd get a TikTok made or something out on Twitter or Snapchat of the stock rocker pulling in. Do you, does that happen when you pull into a site to get loaded? Yeah. It's kind of like a celebrity see it sighting. Everybody's oh my god, stock rockers. Yeah, all in I, one. I mean. I don't want to brag, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's rocked. Uh, it's, it's, and, and, a, it's an easy conversation starter. There you go. Um, At two they, the they always ask, "Do you have koozies?" And you know, <laughs> and I, I normally try and have koozies in my truck, and uh, it's a lot of fun pulling onto a farm, and they say, uh, you know. Oh, I didn't know the stock rocker was hauling our livestock. <laughs> I was just at a feedlot the other day. I think I was in Carroll County, and there's, oh, I didn't know the stock rocker was hauling for us. That's yeah. funny. Well, yeah, it actually costs extra. And you're not <laughs> you're like, you're like, here. And autographs are fifteen bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is how we really. And make you're them. not rolling in with some uh, tricked out Pete three seventy nine or W nine hundred. You're getting her done with a good old Freightliner, right? Yeah, it's a two thousand one Freightliner FLD one twenty, just the run of the mill truck. Yep. You got a Detroit in it. It does. It's got a sixty series Detroit, Man, and we thirteen got this, speed. And we almost got the same truck. I got a two thousand one Freightliner FLD. 120, but it's a severe duty, so setback axle, day cab with the Detroit. There you go. Yeah, I uh, need to get some trucker lingo in there. Twin screw. Yeah, <laughs> got it. <laughs> Twin stick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, yeah, it came from a repo auction, actually. I sold a Kenworth, and I had full, anti- full anticipation of buying another Kenworth, but I couldn't find what I was looking for, and this repo auction was coming up. Yeah. So I went and bought it, and... Hey man, I've repainted it. I've redone everything to it. I've probably put. The other day we were guessing about seven hundred and fifty thousand miles on it. Wow! Oh, you said a million in your introduction. Well, that's just that on truck. that truck. Oh, All yeah. right. he's been over a million. Uh, miles. We gotta be careful. We got these fact checkers. We got these. Yeah, right. that's yeah. right. That's well, we also rolled in with a different truck, so that's true. I mean, it, yeah, they might not be on Snapchat, but. As far as that goes, they will still point out if we say something that doesn't match up from start to finish, you know, even in our Farm for Fun shows. So mm-hmm. uh, we appreciate our audience. We really do. And and all of our fact checkers because we wouldn't be where we are without them. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Another beer break? Yeah. I think so. This next one is going to be, of course, Goose Island. Uh, thanks to Dole Distributing again. Uh, Goose Island Beer Company. A double dry hopped IPA. Tropical, juicy, and... I, I, smell it. Is it guava? Is that how you say that? Guava. 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 Smell, smell that one. It almost... And it's got a light green can. It's got a pink uh, goose head oh. on it. Uh, double dry hopped IPA with natural guava flavor. This is the guava or the... Fruitiness doesn't hit till the end again. Wow. But the front of it is... This one's better than the last one. Really? It, to me, it is. I'm the opposite. This is this, this is, is straight up good beer here. I'm not getting, Really? And it's crazy <laughs> that it's an IPA because it's not... A lot of the IPAs we've gotten is overtaking hops. But the, the dry... It, it you said dry, dry in there. Yeah, there yeah. This is a dry. What do you think, Kim? Uh, it might be the Love's Hot Dog I had earlier. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty good. That's yeah, good. No, that that is a different. I don't know if I've tasted a beer that has a finish like this one. It is dry, like if you're drinking wine, yeah. and it's just you know, yeah. you know, back of your throat I, dry. I like the last beer better. Yeah, but this guava, I, that must be what it is. Yeah, so I, I like guava nectar. So I mean, it's so the the name of this beer, I forgot to say it. It's the Guava Squad. Where do you get Guava, guava Squad? Guava nectar from a guava plant. <laughs> I, I, like Casey is near a <laughs> heavy Casey's Hispanic, uh, <laughs> like maybe Lenox, Iowa. <laughs> Lenox. <laughs> Lenox, Iowa. <laughs> okay. We can probably edit that out. Uh, there uh-uh. right. That one's staying in there. So uh, I, you guys don't, maybe you know, I know Cam from the auctioneering world. Uh, he's been reserve champion at a bunch of contests that I've been at. Reserve behind who? Well, I a couple guys. He did. I've lost oh, David I, several times. <laughs> he's competed to me. I don't know if he has or not, but anyways, he does. He's farmer, trucker, uh, stock rocker, uh, social media expert. Uh, any he, and he's an auctioneer too. So, Cam, what's what's something that I don't know that you're really good at? I don't know. You pretty much nailed everything. Nailed a 
Nailed all your good yeah. points. Yeah. That's, that's okay. What it. What are you not good at? A I, lot. The he, list goes on and on. <laughs> we we were we were at a bar once, and and he was just getting done. I don't know where you that you drove there or something, and it was uh, Halloween night. And on Halloween night, uh, they had a, a, a you know best dress contest, and Cam looks like a trucker, so he was dressed as a trucker, and and yeah, so he was not good at winning the contest because he was just <laughs> yeah. You know, they, <laughs> I so I like to wear bibs when I'm driving because they're comfortable. Yep. Uh, they're they're just easy to wear. So we stopped at that bar, and uh, they said, "Oh, we like your." Uh, costume i was like <laughs> uh, it's kind of like that's what i'd wear tomorrow not on halloween <laughs> so you didn't win no i didn't but i got a close second i think oh, that's I think you funny. got a close second yeah. like there's like a frankenstein there he put some serious work into he, it he did oh, that's funny. going up to someone that's not pregnant and you think might be pregnant it's, yeah, it's, oh, congratulations yeah. Oh, whoops Ooh. yeah yeah Okay, so I'm a, I consider you an influencer, you know, and you've got uh, a number of people that follow what you do, what you repost and, and put out there. What's somebody that you look up to when you're looking at social media platforms or or watching someone as a really reliable source? Who who do you look up to? What's the, is it Charlie Barron from Wisconsin? Mm -hmm. uh, his yeah. videos crack me up. And then the, the Bush light guy. Uh, Miles. Yeah. The you betcha guy, yeah, the you betcha guy, the the you betcha, yeah. and, and those the, two guys kind of, and run the keeper together. moving guy. Those guys yeah. crack me up. Yep, that's yep. funny. That's um, a good one. I I don't know. I honestly, I'm probably not on social media crazy amount, so it's kind of hard. But those two always seem to pop up. I can't believe like, you said you hated uh, TikTok, but I can't believe you haven't made it there because there's a large trucking community there. Um, so I did post TikTok like right when it came out. Uh, I posted some videos of I was hauling for some Amish that day, yeah, and it did blow up. I got a ton of views. Then I I had posted some other ones, but I don't like how the next video starts for the last one ends, and it's like crap. I've been sitting here for a half hour, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like oh, I felt like I watched three videos, it's and then an hour suck. later, yeah. Yeah, it is a very much time suck. So yeah, you got to manage that. Yeah, yeah so I, I like Snapchat. Just I'm not sure if TikTok's my deal. I tried it. Hey, that's all part of it. One of uh, the sources of a lot of our listeners is Ag Twitter. And uh, when you talk about influencers and, and social media stars, uh, a question that we've now seen posed a couple of times. Uh, first one was shared well, from one of our listeners, uh, Randy, uh, at RJFran23 from Winthrop, Iowa, uh, posed who the biggest celebrity in agriculture is. So he was uh, posing the example of, so you've got Tiger Woods that represents Nike and golf. You know, he's obviously top of the game, top, there for a long time, led that, led that area. But he was asking, who in agriculture is that person? Did he have an answer? Well, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people commented back. Uh, I should pull that thread up. I mean, uh, the first one that comes to my mind was the, the Peterson Farm Brothers. Yeah, I don't know the the ones that do the parody the parody music. Uh, they follow the stock rocker. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Shout out! Uh, the other one that was mentioned that I can remember off the top of my head was Jason Mock. We've had uh, Jason speak at a conference before. Uh, obviously, doing a lot of of crazy things. He was uh, deemed the Elon Musk of ag today. Oh, really? Yeah, that's a good parallel. Yeah, that is. Yep. I watch a lot of Greg Judy. He does the 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 pasture rotation down in Missouri. He's always speaking. If you follow him, he's always speaking at universities, and yeah, he does. Oh, uh, former guest Andy Pastor was on that list. Uh, I don't know if Andy would think of that himself by no, by yeah, the conversation. He's too humble, but yeah, yep, he does a lot of good just in general for ag. There's nothing not positive that comes from him. Oh, another one was uh, Q Keneally oh, was was Quentin. thrown out there, the wakeboard farmer. Uh, another one was Mike Rowe. Um, you know, obviously dirty jobs guy. I don't know if he's necessarily pro agriculture, but he's pro, uh, he's blue, pro work. blue collar pro yeah. work. Yeah. I listen to a lot of Andrew McRae farming the countryside. Yeah. I don't admit that I listen to NPR, but there's one on there. Uh, <laughs> how I built this. Mm -hmm. That is my absolute oh, is favorite podcast. Hey, I don't think I align <laughs> with the way their guests vote, but I always like how the businesses started from nothing. That's and went to something. Yeah. <clears throat> That's something you need, though. I think as an as an adult, like even though you don't maybe agree with something that they believe in, you can appreciate, you can respect what they're doing, and pull positive, um, productive things out of it. So, hundred and thirty eight responses to this. Whoa, Hefty Brothers. Oh, yeah. Temple Grandin. 
Sharky. Uh, the, the farmer babe got involved in this and uh, was was. That's the t- handle. Yep, and uh, she's not exactly most loved in ag Twitter, mm. and uh, she was basically stating that uh, what was that concert? Farm Aid. The performers at Farm Aid were being reflected as potential spokespersons for agriculture, mm-hmm. and uh, was debunking that just because they performed there didn't mean that they supported yeah. agriculture themselves. But how do you, how do you get somebody? to speak out for agriculture. And I find it hard when I wrestled with this question about there's so many versions of agriculture. You've got hog farmers, you've got ranchers, you've got, you know, cow calf guys, uh, those guys that custom finish, you got row crop only guys that grow hops. Thank God for beer. Well, and then like you and I are in agriculture, banking and right. sales and, uh, right. you know, even we had stock granular, rocker, stock rocker. On Snapchat. Yeah. Vance grow. Vance. Ooh. Vance Crow would be a good one. Yeah. But how do you get somebody elevated to that status, and who do you elevate there? Oprah. No, I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> but somebody like Oprah. Yeah, not her. Yeah. You know, but, but how do you get somebody who, and maybe that's what it is. Someone has to be a celebrity first, and then how do you win them over? Because obviously Tiger Woods didn't start Nike. Mm-hmm. Nike went and convinced Tiger to be a spokesperson. Well, then he got fired for a while. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess they got it. They said, "Ah, it's it's socially bad for us not to do that." So yeah, there's a picture of Donald Trump on there. I mean, it, it 138 responses. There's a lot of a lot of variety, but I don't know if anything popped in your mind. I think that Mike Rowe would be a good one, but even then, I don't think that he has the audience reach to those that are not pro work. You know, pro. He, he has a very uh, directional audience for his listenership and audience and fan base where we'd want a a celebrity that can reach across the aisle. If you want to say that uh, across the aisle to share the message and the positivity, how many people in agriculture don't work? Yeah. I mean, he might hit a hundred percent of the demographic. I'm being biased there, but I'm going to say that most people in agriculture that I know work. So I think he's still, what he's trying to say is, I think Randy's question. Yeah. I think Randy's question was, how do you get our message to those who don't know about farming? What do you think? We wouldn't know this in in our area, but like Randy Owen and Teddy Gentry of Alabama, Mm -hmm. they have a Hereford ranch down in uh, Fort Payne, Alabama. They were talking about. I hauled cattle for them. Really? They were talking about a receiver for the Packers. That was uh, Jordy Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. He has a farm. And then, uh, gosh, who was the other one? Uh, Kurt Warner has a farm up in Northeast Iowa. Oh, yeah, he does. Yep. Mm -hmm. I loaded cattle down the road from Ashton Kutcher's. Oh, yeah? Parents' house over Did, by Iowa City somewhere. Who's the gal he married? Demi Moore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He married her one so, time. So when you load cattle for these celebrities, uh, did they load them? Not quite. No. <laughs> the, the farmer just said, oh, yeah, down the road is uh, uh, so-and-so. But, yeah. Well, I listened to Rump Chat, another podcast favorite of mine, and uh, he said that he once picked up some cattle from Garth Brooks's ranch. Oh, really? So that'd be another celebrity, and... Maybe we've got them, and we just need to leverage their connection to agriculture. Because I agree, there's a lot of of wealth. Garth would be a huge one. A lot of wealth that could be translated into uh, the ability to communicate that message. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So you stopped at celebrities' places. You stopped at non-celebrity places. What, what's your coolest story? Being the stock rocker. So, uh, occasionally, people buy me like coffee or like buy my dinner, and it's, it's at first it was like, well, that's weird. And now it's like, oh, I guess they appreciate my page. I was in a little town in South Dakota. I might have been on the Montana side or the Wyoming side. I, like that 212, like you go through uh, Belfouche, South Dakota, and then on up to Montana. You're from up there, David. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's like a little restaurant right there along the road. I didn't know I knew anybody in this little town. But I went to pay for my meal, and they're like, oh, the truck driver that just left cover your meal. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Perfect. That's kind of cool. So how get, about how about uh, do you have a favorite or most popular snap that like uh, judge on most screenshots? One that's you li- you've liked the most. Um, do you have a memorable one that that wins? <laughs> well, you're thinking about that. The one that I like is can't park here, bud. Can't so he's here, he's got like somebody's in a ditch. People that's an pro- ongoing. People thing. probably send yeah. him like you know it's upside down semi or something. You can't park there, bud. I know Parked that's going to come back to bite me in the butt. There's going to come a day. <laughs> so someday yeah. it's talk I'm in the ditch. You're going to be in the ditch. Uh, one time I was driving my auction topper down to like Columbia, Missouri, 
and I was stuck in traffic in Kansas City, so we fired up the old auction topper, and we had some interesting looks while we were stuck in traffic. <laughs> I, I think that's probably one of the most people that still talk about. That's funny. No, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, you are going to end up in the ditch sometime, and someone's going to get an epic one. And... They always say it's not uh, it's not if it's when you wreck as a truck driver. Or the old uh, mud flap bandit. Yeah, <laughs> I get plenty of those. That, those are the ones I have to wean out because you can only post so many a day. Of... Right, so many pictures of a Wilson Hopper yeah. with only one mud flap. <laughs> I'm just glad to know I'm not the only one that rips off mud flaps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did that this fall. Father in law brought it out to me. Hey, you left this in the silage pile. Mm-hmm. Not on purpose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so as you've traveled around the world, is there is there a favorite truck stop? We have the bit course, the I-80 truck stop, but you stop at Love's, you stop at Flying J. Is there a reason one's got better than others? I like Sat Brothers because they have heated toilet seats. Oh, oh my. What? I think that feels weird when I sit down on uh, a warm toilet seat. Like they, al- they also shoot water. Oh, uh, yeah. The bidet. Yeah. The bidet. Yeah. If you're ever in Sat Brothers in Percival, Iowa, or I don't think the Council Bluffs location does, but I know the Percival, Iowa one does. I remember my question now, a, a favorite place to deliver to. I like going to Green Bay, um, not because I like their weather. But, like, you go past Lambo, and it's just, like, you can feel how much love that town. Because Green Bay is not that big a town. No, it's not. But, for ha- like, their stadium is in the middle of town. It's, like, parking, parking, houses. Yep. I mean, Lambo Field is pretty cool to drive by. And, I mean, I, I've been a lot of places, but it's... I, I would second that. I've been to two Green Bay games. My dad's a pretty big fan, and so inherently I kind of am for, for NFL and uh, I think we stayed in Appleton, which is like 15 yeah, minutes south. So, you know, there's a quick start, there. and there was, there was, <laughs> <laughs> there's a quick start. There's also, a very 42. terrible strip club there. I mean, I <laughs> wouldn't know, but I just, I just, I'm just saying from the uh, the billboards I've seen. <laughs> I, I'm a Chiefs fan, so we had like a 60 year grudge against the yeah. Packers. You know, so the, my story about the Green Bay is we were there one night, and it was supposed to snow that night a couple inches, and it snowed like nine or ten inches, and we had to be we wanted to go to the game and tailgate at like 8 o'clock. And no plows had hit the road yet. And I'm, those Wisconsin people were just driving 65 down the road with no plows that have gone. And no one was in the ditch from Appleton to the Green Bay. That Down here, it would have been hmm. chaos. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Can't park there, bud. No. Can't park there, bud. Everyone. There's no. a parking lot in the ditch down Jeez. here. Yeah. So before we try this next beer, I want to remind everybody that uh, just before the holidays, Outback Wraps. If you visit OutbackWraps.com and use the farm for-profit code, you get 20% off your order. Stocking stuffer, for sure. And Outback Wraps, you've already heard. You already know exactly what they are. If you've listened to this podcast at all, if not, go find them. Yeah, they're killing it, too. Watch it. Yeah, awesome social media stuff. I love it. Yeah, Cecilia does a fantastic job with that. OutbackWraps.com, farm, for-profit, get you 20% off. What's our next beer? Oh. Oh. It's the yellow can, guys. 312 Urban Wheat. This is a big one for Goose Island, so uh, let's give it a try. Do you think they like it called 312 or 312? Ooh, good question. I don't know. Inspired by the city of Chicago and densely populated with flavor. Okay, I get that. Play on words. 312's spicy aroma of Cascade Hops is followed by a crisp, fruity, ale flavored, delivered smooth and creamy in body. Bright, lemony, and a bit hazy, says mm. McCann. It's it's a lot lighter yeah. than an IPA. Yeah. Dave shook his head. Um, yeah. I like the second one. That was very good. Cam, what do you think about 312? Again, I still got the loves uh, hot dog taste. <laughs> so so like, t- everything tastes good, yeah. No, I, I still like the first one the best. Yeah. How many loves hot dogs and loves showers do you think, or, or truck stop showers do you take a year? Well, thanks to Love's, uh, I buy so many gallons there. I have unlimited drink refills and unlimited showers, so you'd probably be surprised. And you don't pay for fuel, probably. Cause yeah, you I use the mud flap off, app. So, yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Stop. And, this and stop. became a farm for profit show. This is <laughs> yeah. how you become profitable. Yeah. And, and still charges double to pick your stock up. Oh, man. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, sh- I shower... About every load of hogs. I cannot stand hauling a load of hogs. I mean, this time of year, I'm like sweating and it's cold out here. You know, my, cold outside and my hair freezes. Yeah. I got to find a shower right away. So luckily, 
There's normally a truck stop with a shower near a slaughter plant that we haul to. So there's been a couple times we've done charity auctions together where you got to be in a tuxedo, bow tie, you know, go out and uh, Cam will say, hey, can you pick me up at Love's? So he walks in as a trucker and walks out in a full tuxedo ready to go. And I'm just, the, the looks from the other truckers. The, Cam is more than just a trucker. He, he Don't you have a four-year degree? You're four degree in business? Uh, yeah, and I'm still paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still I'm really banking <laughs> off of uh, this new uh, president oh, canceling out. But, yeah, I went to Pine Ridge here in Des Moines, yep. and I had sawdust and probably urine all down me. I went and showered. I had you pick me up. Yep. And I remember I walked in in my bibs, covered. I walked out in a tuxedo, my hair all done. And the woman was like, our showers are for professional drivers. Uh, they're not open to the public. And I was like, yeah, I know. I use my rewards. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's pretty funny. But yeah, the looks when you walk out in a full tux. That's yeah. pretty good. How do, so how did you get into auctioning? Um, I actually started in like third grade scooping the pins at the Clern to Livestock auction. Uh, they had to pay me cash because I was too young to actually get a paycheck. <laughs> uh, but was. Yeah, I just I remember <laughs> the auctioneer wearing the cowboy hat, the creased jeans, they, you know, at the time it had been probably like a 1995 Cadillac, you yep. know, coupe. And it was like, I want to be that guy. Do you ever so. wear a cowboy hat? Oh, yeah. Dave? Yeah, definitely. You Used to all the time. Of course, being from Montana, wore cowboy hat all the time. And yep. that's the image I had of the auctioneer, too, was cowboy hat all the time. And anytime I sell livestock, definitely. However, uh, I had like Iowa State University call me one time and say, hey, we'd love for you to do our charity fundraiser. And then... Uh, I walked in and my suit, and when I walked in to meet with them, they're like, "This is great! It's it, we've we've been referred to you for three years." I'm like, whoa, "Whoa, whoa, stop right there! Why did it take three years to call me?" Oh, you had a cowboy hat on in your picture on your website. What perception is everything, folks? Perception is everything. They wanted the the suit and tie, and they wanted the uh, tar- uh, uh, you know the tux, and so that day we rebranded and made it a completely different website for fundraising, Champion Fundraiser. And then we have livestock page too. You need a Whitaker Marketing branded cowboy hat. There you go. <laughs> it's like a C dad. With a W, big old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't That'd know about cool. that. <laughs> Then you, then you gotta learn all the, the rules for cowboy hats. So like my wife, we we're down in Texas and if you tilt your did you know if you tilt your hat? If your hat is just a little bit cockeyed sideways, uh, listeners, you, you comment on one of one of Tanner's Twitter feeds here. Is if it's tipped sideways, that means you're single. So you're out on the prowl at the bar. If your hat sideways, the cowboy lingo says, I'm on the prowl. Mm-hmm. If you're straight across, it says, I'm married. There's And if you've got a high crown to it, if you've got a low crown to it, if it's fat wide brim to it, means you're a bull rider, means you're a, you know, different things uh, mean different things. So cowboy lingo that you don't even know. I say, I'm going to need to go and get some lessons before yeah. I go pick one out. I, no uh, I was always just, uh, what do you want to say, a tight ass? So I wore straw. <laughs> They're like, it's winter time. You need to be wearing felt. You need I'm to be like, wearing a felt hat. No, my wallet says different. <laughs> so. That's pretty funny. Well, I know, Cam, that you don't, you spend a lot of time on Snapchat, but uh, what we've been seeing on TikTok lately is kind of a fun challenge. And I want to challenge the rest of you guys. We're going to play a little game here. It's where I make a natural noise or a noise with something else. Oh, jeez. Oh, and then you guys try to mimic it. Get to mimic it with your mouth. <laughs> Think Cam, you can do it? Cam no, being just edited. looks enthused. No, we're not editing any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I might go through a couple of a couple of different ones. Did I'll you tr- plan these out or are you just going off by the seat of your pants? I've been jotting them down as we're talking because I thought this would be kind of fun. So yeah. the, the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to rip a piece of paper. <laughs> That didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that actually, I'm I'm looking at the sound waves. The sound waves match. It's got to be good. That's gonna be that's gonna be pretty close, Cam. Uh, it kind of sound like when you release your brakes on your sound. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't do nothing. Uh, what else did I jot down that might be a good idea? I don't know. You ripped it in half. I ripped my oh. paper. <laughs> Uh oh! What about this? Ooh. That was a golf ball being dropped on the table. Dave? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 
Oh, I don't know. <laughs> this is uh, this is a bad game. You better. <laughs> what do you mean? This is a bad game. You better pour. I'm another, having a lot of fun. You better pour another one. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah. Let's let's pour another. We'll one. We'll have to get on Snapchat or something. Oh, dang! We got a glass glass for this. Ooh. Uh huh. Right. That noise. <laughs> Can't be even going to try that one. That was me pouring a beer into a glass. <laughs> oh, I thought it was a urine in the hole or something. <laughs> here's uh, here's one more, and then we can move on. <laughs> no cheating with another pair. Yeah, I, I, got, I, got, I got it. Oh, that's pretty good. Wait, we got to do one for you, though. No, I'm out of this. No, no. Oh, that's the best one yet. (laughs) Fail. Moving on. Moving on. We just lost all of the listeners. These guys. What was what was that movie with the police officer that could make like any noise? Oh, uh, the cop movie. Um, High Tower. High Tower. Was it High Tower? No, he was the big guy. All right, the same thing we said last time. Corey's giving me the old signal over here. I'm full. Usually about the time we feel like we need to pee, our guest needs to pee. So why don't we take a quick little break before we wrap up, and we'll come back and finish this out. Yeah. I'm a truck driver. I'm good for three more hours. I'm good for three more hours. <laughs> here we go. Hey, you don't have to ask me what my wife thinks. <laughs> We're back, and we're back, we're back <laughs> with this stupid free music. That's some good independent music, royalty free music. Yeah. Royalty free. What yeah. a bummer! When you get big enough, you know they they come crawling for you. So, <sighs> so what? Yeah, we could have uh, people play. Well, we could. How about that? If you know somebody out there that wants exposure and wants to contribute to our break music and hype up intro music. Send it our way. Farm for profit LLC at gmail.com. Carbon copy Trey Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the with that disclosure form that says we can use it so we don't get in trouble for that. Yep. I like that guy you guys had, the truck stop souvenirs on. Royce? Yeah. Royce. Royce. I I'd never heard him and it I mean Look at our reach. Yeah. See, he did listen to our podcast. Hear that, Royce? Yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in a trucking family, so I guess it kind of hit a little too close to and home. And he sings, so he, his, I have a CD, his, the rest of his songs are like good. If you like good old country, yeah. you know, he's not doing any of that poppy crap. It's good. All right, before you stop to pee, we poured another beer. And uh, this is the last one for the day from Goose Island. Thank you, Dole Distributing. This is simply the Goose Island IPA. Indian Pale Ale. That's what it says right there on the can. So, bottoms up. This is the green can if you're looking. Different green than the first green. It's a darker green. Yeah. Ooh. This is more what I expect out of an IPA. Yeah, this is an IPA. <clears throat> very, very accurately labeled. Cam? Uh, it tastes like Love's uh, Hot Dog. <laughs> <laughs> and the theme continues. Hey, that's better yeah. than, uh, what was it, a plywood? That Tony, that's right. Tony Tony that's right. Very woody. Very woody taste. <laughs> There's hoppy citrus, Hoppy citrus with grapefruit, pine, and floral notes. <laughs> I still like uh, number one. Me. Yep. yep. I think number one. Yeah. Yeah, number one for me. You liked the second one. I like the deuce. You did. You liked the it. Deuce. You liked number two. So, speaking of reach... We did, before this, for the first time, ask for questions from our audience before we went ahead and got started. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. We had a, a Twitter follower uh, that will remain nameless. Wanted me to ask you, Cam, who your favorite Tractor Zoom employee was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I know who this was. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I can't just pick one. Oh, that's not how this game's played. Jeremy, Kyle, yeah. Kyle bought me dinner one time, so... I mean, if you buy me food, you're kind of my favorite. <laughs> oh, but I do like the photos, uh, yep. the tractor pulling. Yep. Well, Jeremy Hewitt is the one who asked the question, and it said, ask him who his favorite employee is. I have my guesses, but now, make sure you put him on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you are going to get in trouble for Kyle that. Kyle wins yeah. the deal. Buy him lunch. Buy him dinner. Yeah. That's funny. Food. Straight to the man's he heart. Was, he was the first one to call me uh, <laughs> to get my content. Yeah. And That's funny. I got a question from a uh, came from Snapchat, but it's a buddy of mine, Colin Height Susan. He's a trucker friend of mine. Um, have had some beers with him, or actually uh, some Jim Beam with him a few times. He mm-hmm. likes that stuff. But uh, he wants to know 
What do you think about young guys getting into the industry, into the trucking industry right now? I, I'm driving a 2001 Freightliner. It's a 20 year old truck. I paid cash for it. I got on the road, got to going. I mean, it. My first truck was a 2000. Or my first truck was a 1995 Volvo. I gave five thousand dollars for it at a repo or at a at a farm auction. That got me going in the business, and then I bought a 1989 Kenworth for cash, and then I bought this one that I have now. I bought it for eighty five hundred at a repo auction. And I got on the road going, and uh, I kept saying I'll upgrade once I get a little money in my pocket. But it seems like I like money in my pocket more than I like a truck loan or anything else. (laughs) So I guess, I mean, if if you're a cash operator, you can kind of be more flexible. As far as getting into the business, I mean, there's trucking ads everywhere. People always looking for owner operators. I mean, the issue that we have right now is, I mean, you have to be 23 or older I mean, I see a lot of young guys getting into it. I mean, you about got to buy your own truck, and then your insurance is going to be ridiculous. If you have any, even a clean driving record, if you're less than 23, it's going to be $30,000 a year, Holy if not smokes. more, in just commercial insurance. Wow. Wow. So if I was a young guy starting out, I would find a larger company to lease onto and run underneath their DOT number. You can still own the truck, so you'd still have some good income, but you'd be running underneath their authority and their insurance. And uh, we've had that happen before. It's just, I mean, it's like anything. If you show up and do a good job, people are going to notice. Yeah. And if you want to drive truck, I would assume that there's farmers everywhere that could utilize help. I mean, you've got feed lots that need feed runs. You've got yeah. uh, guys that need grain hauled. If you're wanting to get some experience and some miles underneath you before you get to that 23 age, so you could go drive that way. If what you should do is, is get a DOT number like right now. If you know at some point in time in your life you want to own a trucking company, get an LLC, get a DOT number, and you don't ha- it, it can you can file it to be inactive. So let's say it's inactive for five years and then you activate it. You have a five year old entity. You're not a new uh, company because oh. that's where they get you. Is I'm going to go out. I'm going to get an LLC, then go straight to the DMV, get a DOT number. That's where the insurance gets you. But if you can pro let, tip right there. Yeah, if you can let your DOT number sit inactive for multiple years, uh, you won't be a new entity. What's what's it take to get a DOT number? Do you have to be of age, driving age? Or? No, I mean you don't even really need to have a LLC. I mean anyone can apply for it. It's just right now it's kind of tough because of COVID. And you got to make an appointment to so, go into the. So if you had a kid that was twelve years old and. You were their parent. Yeah. You could go start an LLC, and you know if they if you knew they had a hankering. You for get it. online. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Iowa DMV. Then you have a ten year degree, ten year third. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lots of experience Company at twenty three years old. Well, that's uh, valuable. I think that's going to go a long ways for our listener. Hmm. Yeah. So. I mean, if anyone's got any questions, just contact me. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm third generation, and we've been at it for over seventy two, seventy three years almost. Yeah. Nineteen forty eight. So, but I mean, I can help. Whoever out, I mean, it's it's kind of like the auction community. I mean, you have the guys that want to help the younger guys, but then you also have the ones that don't. But yeah. for the most part, it's kind of a club. I mean, Dave, mm-hmm. you know when we go to those auction conventions and stuff, there's guys that want to help the younger people. And I think trucking's a lot like that. Well, it's just like podcasting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Crazy yeah. the network of people that have podcasts. I mean, everybody has podcasts, but yeah. just how kind the network is to everybody else around you. I mean, you have the people where it's like, oh, they bought a truck and there's competition and they're going to take away. There's plenty of work out there for uh, every. Yeah. If, I mean, if you're good at what you do, there's yourself. plenty of work. Yeah. What's your What's your first generation? You're the third. What's the first and second generation think of the stock rocker? Think of, they even know what you do? Uh, my my dad got an iPhone last year, so that was a step up. <laughs> yeah, I I couldn't send him maps because his old uh, flip phone. I couldn't send him maps to hog sites, so we finally got him into an iPhone, and now I can send him stuff. There you go. Here's a public service announcement for everybody. I'm going to make a rant, and I think you're going to make a rant. <laughs> Here's my rant. I just came up with it. Learn how to drop a pin. If you don't know how to drop a pin, if you don't even know what I mean by drop a pin, Google it. Drop a pin because I don't need to know the address. I don't need to know where. I just drop me a pin. Yep. Period. Yeah, then you can drive right to it. Yeah, so my dad was notorious for writing on backs of envelopes. Turn right at the old tree. Turn left at the shed. So one time, I think I was like in Mount Air, Iowa, which isn't too far from the Missouri border. I crossed into Missouri, and I'm like, I still haven't found this feedlot. 
I finally called my dad. And I said, where's this feedlot at? He said, well, you got to turn uh, back east at the old railroad. I said, Dad, I haven't seen a railroad the whole way. Well, they tore it out 20 years ago, but you can still see the ridge line <laughs> where the railroad <laughs> used to be. He goes, there should be a pasture there with some Herefords in it. <laughs> it's probably dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys saw my TikTok, that was my TikTok earlier, yeah. was that uh, we went to an auction two days, three days ago, and uh, the the my agent even wrote at the old schoolhouse. Well, there's no address to it. Like everybody knew where it was, but I didn't know because I was coming from out of town. So I get into this town, and of course, there's a place that says school district but then there's one that looks like a one-room schoolhouse so i went to the wrong building that's not the old schoolhouse the schoolhouse is the new schoolhouse it's the only schoolhouse they have that's funny well Corey, wow. I, I ranted last week and yeah. i kind of sucked at it yeah and dave ran it so while while we're at it i got a rant too that's based on the phone i don't know if it's a rant towards apple i don't know if it's a rant towards verizon uh who i have my supplier through no free ads, but you get one there. Is this a 5G rant? I can this see it coming. This is a 5G rant. <laughs> yes. You mofos. <laughs> I, I, you know, I made the conscious decision. I listened to Chad Colby, you know, just update your phone, you know, just have the latest, latest technology. I was kind of one of those guys that would always hang like three model, model years back on the iPhone. And finally, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to get the new one every year. That way I'm up to date. I, I'm i on it a lot. I use it for social media. I use it for the podcasting, all that. Like a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's a lot of money, but I use it all the time. And I'm like, okay, I'll upgrade to what is the 12, 12 Pro and 5G. Great. I got 5G around Des Moines. I have it. It says I have it all the time. I drop more calls now than I ever did on 4G LTE. And when I do drop down to 4G LTE, it's like it's worse than 3G was. I, I drop uh, Tanner. Tanner, I talked to you on the phone. I drop. I mean, I'm in and out, dropping calls all the time. Well, what the hell? So I just got an iPhone 12 or iPhone 12 Mini yesterday. So I'm now on 5G. It says I'm on 5G right now, and I'm getting 28 meg download. That's not 5G. When did this start? Because I have been having a lot of drop calls. I have a, huh, that's I have started. an iPhone 7. That's not close. Is that an old one? That's an old one. Is that an old one? Yeah. That's five <laughs> model years back. Oh, but it still works. So I use it. Yeah. But yeah. Well, I remember we used to have bag phones in all of our semis. Yeah. I never heard of a drop call. <laughs> I mean, every, it true. always worked. Yep. That's got a point there. Yeah. Those Motorola bag phones. Yeah. Well, so the old the old deal was like people say, and actually there's a lawsuits against it. Like you'd have an old model iPhone and they'd start slowing you down. Um, they wouldn't upgrade you know, their technology right. <laughs> and all that stuff. And they'd make you want to buy a new phone. And now I get the new phone to avoid that. And it's shit. I mean, just dropping calls all over the place. I mean, I used to be able to talk at the farm all day long, never drop a call. And I, I just, I'm in and out all the time. I dropped mine in a Cobet water the other day, like down. And it's still working? water. Yeah. Nice. Wow. Well, the, the only thing I wanted to contribute to this episode, I've been waiting. I've actually been holding this one for a little while is uh ran the grain cart next to my father-in-law almost all fall and he's notorious for not always combining at the same speed so why is it that grain carts have scales on the side of them so the combine operator can see how much is in the grain cart but the combine doesn't have a speed readout on the side of the combine hmm. that way when you pull up in the grain cart you can see that he's going 4.7 miles an hour you can set your tractor to it and then the next time he's going 5.5 miles an hour why, why don't we have monitors on the outside of our combine telling us the speed difference? You must have newer equipment than I got. I think those lights are cool that tell you the goal. Because it's your fault as the grain cart. It'll always be the grain cart operator's fault. <laughs> operator that you can't figure it out. And you know damn well when I pulled up there the last time we were going 3.2 because he was on his phone. And then we're all of a sudden going six mile an hour. It just Maybe it, maybe it's only my father-in-law that changes speeds. He was going different different corn, a different variety, I think. He no. couldn't go as fast. No, that's not the case at all. <laughs> yep. so. No. He doesn't listen to the podcast, so I know I'm safe. Yep. <laughs> I, got, I got one more thing uh, before we sign off here. This is kind of a touchy-feely uh, deal off of TikTok. Um, I've been following uh, the Burkharts, uh, Mike particularly. He's got uh, – a boy that was in an accident in 2008 and has been, uh, they never thought he was going to live. I don't, I don't know his whole story. I know enough to, to be dangerous, but I've been following it and, uh, he's fighting back and, um, doing a lot of cool stuff. 
and uh, he requested the other day that uh, you know during the holidays you know he doesn't have a lot of friends around um, you know like he used to that uh, if we could send him a, a card or some swag or anything like that so I got a Christmas card here we're gonna send it to him um, I got his address so it's uh, Travis Burkhart B U R K H A R T P O Box one eight eight Washington, Indiana, four seven five zero one, and uh, just a simple uh, say that again. I'll put it in the show notes, but say it again. Yep, uh, Travis Burkhart, B U R K H A R T, P O Box one eight eight, Washington, Indiana, four seven five zero one. Um, he likes uh, anything Under Armour. Uh, wears a size extra large shirt, St. Louis Cardinals, Pacers, Colts, and uh, the Texas Longhorns. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, t- I told Mike, I was like, I might have to send him an Iowa State, <laughs> send him an Iowa State shirt. But uh, big twelve champion. Anyway, keep keep your head up, man, and and never stop working towards your goals. Uh, you're you're doing good. Uh, I follow I follow uh, you guys on TikTok, and uh, yeah, keep it up. Yeah, tune in. We will uh, we will keep probably sharing this. I'll put a, a social media post out as well, so that way we can do it. It doesn't yeah. have to just be for the holiday season. If you can remember to maybe uh, send something to brighten somebody's day, it doesn't even have to be Travis. Yeah, but. and I, I, I just connected with Mike. I, I mean, otherwise we would have got him on for this, but we're going to actually have him on um, probably sometime in 2021. We got a busy schedule, early twenty one, but uh, we'll get him on. He's got a he's got a cool story. He's actually uh, lining up his equipment and selling off a lot of the farm stuff to help care for Travis and and uh, you know for his, be there for his wife and, and Travis and family. So, yep. And what's his what's his uh, TikTok handle if somebody wants to follow him? Uh, Mike's. So this would be Travis's dad is farming underscore tbi dad. Gotcha. Cool. All Sounds right. like a good mission. We'll get uh, if you're following on TikTok or Egg Twitter or anything, uh, check him out, friend him, talk to him. Yep. Yeah. Send some messages their way. Well, boys, I think that was another good episode. You going to challenge him or not? You know, just no. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Snap. Why? Uh, yeah. Snap. Take a drink. <clears throat> Twice. Oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. That's a good one. So, Cam, if someone wants to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? You want my phone number? No. How how do you want people to get a hold of you? Either, <laughs> Whatever you want. Either, yeah. I mean, either they're going to. The phone works pretty good. Okay. Well, just be careful because you may get them fact checkers. They may actually go your direction. Whatever Eight. you want to be reached out to. Uh, phone number is 816-510-7859. All right. I mean, you can also Google it or Facebook it. Love's or weird Facebook, pictures. Facebook, car sack trucking. Ca- catch him at Love's. Group, yeah. Yeah. Bring him a hot dog. Rocking stock. It's my Snapchat. Awesome. Thank you for coming. This is fun having somebody in studio. Uh, having you here, longtime supporter of the podcast, we greatly appreciate that. Thanks for having me. And uh, I think Dave is, or Corey is going to send us out. But what Corey wants to do after he sends us out, <laughs> is there like an auctioneer competition to where as Corey sends us out here that you could uh, maybe auction off one of these beers and where you stop, the other one picks it up? You think, you, could, me. you think you yep. could do something like that? We can do it. All right, Corey, send us out, and then we'll end on a cadence. You start. All righty. All right. All right, right here. What are you going to do? Down the minute and 30, down 25. You hit 20, down the minute and 30, here to the minute and 30, down the minute and 30, and 40, here to the minute and 45, 50. And now 5, here to pop it water, the and 50, pop it water, the all in, all done. 55 and 60, down, 60, down, 60, down, 60, here to 60, pop it water, the and 70, daughter, pop it water, the here to 80, but 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 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. That would be $100. Sold. $100. $100 dollars <laughs> bid now. Can we be the hype man? Yep. Yep. You can. Yeah, yeah, I, I was taking my that's headphones off. <laughs> 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 All yeah. right, guys. Here. You going to sell it? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. You, no, you, I thought you check guys us out. Sell, the, sell the beer. F- finish it out, Cam. 100, 110, 120, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 130, 130, 140, 100, 140, 150, here to the 100, 160, 160, 160, 160, sold it your way, $150. Crack a Goose Island beer, mix a drink, you guys deserve it.